On 23rd of September 2006, the Labour Party held its annual conference in Manchester. It was Labour's third consecutive term in government, and a large portion of the British public were deeply unhappy with its behaviour in office. We'd had the wars in the Middle East, the erosion of civil liberties under the war on terror, the surrendering of more and more British sovereignty to the EU, amongst many other things. At this particular Labour conference, a well-organised demonstration against the Labour Party's warmongering was held, consisting of a series of speeches by well-known speakers and a march through Manchester City Centre, ending outside the building where the Labour Party was holding its conference. Estimates of attendance range from 20 to 50,000 people, depending on which source you read. It was certainly one of the biggest UK demonstrations ever seen outside London. I was there on the day and filmed about half an hour's worth of the event, and I was surprised at the range of people who took part. The crowd included everyone from groups campaigning for nuclear disarmament to those protesting to war on terror police state laws. There were a lot of people protesting about the Iraq war and the efforts that were then being made toward expanding the war on terror to include an invasion of Iran. There were communists and 9-11 truthers and people campaigning against the influence of George Bush and a lot of people who wanted Tony Blair out of office, as if he alone was responsible for everything the Labour Party had been doing. There were even Palestinians loudly demonstrating about Gaza. It was an incredibly diverse crowd, people who I expected would in many cases not choose to march together, yet here they were conducting a very peaceful demonstration. And I was really pleased with the fact that so many people, like me, opposed what the Labour Party was doing to our country. Naturally, I was interested to see how the demonstration was going to be reported in the newspapers and on TV. Would there be biased coverage, perhaps concentrating on some sideline instance of violence that would discredit the whole demonstration? I didn't see how that could be done, because there was no violence as far as I saw. Would the coverage concentrate on some fringe group of participants, thus misrepresenting the entire crowd? Or would there be an honest report stating that a diverse group of tens of thousands had peacefully protested at the Labour conference? After all, annual party conferences of the major political parties virtually always receive coverage in most major British newspapers and TV channels. As usual, the national press reported on the content of some of the speeches given by key Labour Party figures inside the conference, but there was virtually no mention of the roughly 30,000 strong demonstration going on outside the venue even though I saw several TV camera crews filming the crowd of demonstrators on the day. The BBC did put out this basic written report, but I saw nothing on the nightly news channels. The press certainly knew the demonstration was going ahead. Norman Garris of the Guardian newspaper, which typically supports the Labour Party and its policies, put out an article the day before the march, framing the demonstration in a negative light before it even happened. The article even implied that there could be a 7-7 style terrorist attack at the event. But after the demonstration went ahead peacefully, as far as I know, The Guardian didn't report on the march at all. In fact, hardly any of the newspapers did, and this lack of news reporting may account for why there is only the briefest mention of the demonstration in Wikipedia's write-up about the 2006 Labour conference. Even the local newspapers in Manchester had nothing to say about a march which had seen most of the city centre closed off to vehicles on the day. Now I'm hesitant to call this conspiracy, but for some reason there was a broad media silence on the subject of this march. The march should have been big news. Tony Blair gave his farewell speech at the conference, for once appearing nervous, which makes me wonder if he saw much of the marching opposition on his way into the venue. I mean, there were people holding up plaques with his head on a platter. I'd actually like to start by saying something very simple. Thank you. Thank you to you, our party, our members, our supporters, the people who week in, wake out, do the work, take the flak, but don't often get the credit. The march absolutely demonstrated the broad public dissatisfaction with the Labour Party, which went on to lose the next general election and has rightly been struggling to claw back public support ever since. 
So why was the march not big news? In 2010, student tuition fee protests, which ended with protesters storming the Conservative Party headquarters, received wide media coverage. Though we could argue that it was more newsworthy because it involved violent clashes with police. However, in 2013, the Conservative Party held its annual conference in Manchester and approximately 50,000 demonstrators peacefully marched against the party's NHS cuts. It was covered by The Guardian, BBC, ITV and even local newspapers like The Metro. So why did the protest at the Labour Party conference in 2006 get so little media coverage? To the point where there is now very little news information on the internet about the event, as if it never even happened. I'll take a speculative guess at it, but I welcome any other suggestions. Labour and the Conservatives have been in a political ping-pong game of power sharing in Britain for decades, and the national newspapers and TV stations are generally split into camps of loyalty to either party. But on the subjects that were being protested about at the Labour 2006 conference, both of the major political parties were in agreement. Both parties supported the wars in the Middle East and the police state laws being introduced. So, being that there was no point scoring to be made by either party in the reporting of the demonstrations outside the Labour conference, there was much less incentive for the news media owners and their editors to bother bringing the subject of the demonstration to broad public attention. Now, although this demonstration took place eight years ago, I've kept my copy of the footage all that time. So, regardless of the time gap, I consider it a very good example of the fact that if you want to be informed about what's going on in your country, you shouldn't just rely on the national media to keep you up to scratch. There are lots of other smaller news sources out there too, and a lot of important things go on that barely get a mention in the big national newspapers and TV stations. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. I know I look a lot older. That's what being leader of the Labour Party does to you. Actually, uh, looking around, some of you look a lot older. That's what having me as leader of the Labour Party does to you. <laughs> and what about this wonderful city of Manchester? A city transformed. A city that shows what a confident, open and proud people with a great Labour Council can do for themselves. So thank you. Of course, the daily coverage of politics focuses on the negative. But take a step back and be proud. This is a changed country. Above all, it is progressive ideas which define its politics. That's the real result of a third term victory. We put the party at the service of the country. Their reality became our reality. Their worries, our worries. We abandoned the ridiculous self-imposed dilemma between principle and power. We went back to first principles, our values, our real values, those that are timeless and separated them from doctrine and dogma that had been ravaged by time. And in doing so, we freed Britain at long last from the reactionary choice that dominated British politics for so long, between individual prosperity and a caring society. We proved that economic efficiency and social justice are not opposites, but partners in progress. We defied conventional political wisdom and thereby we changed it. And around that, we built a new political coalition. The USP of New Labour is aspiration and compassion reconciled. We reach out not just to those in poverty or need, but those who are doing well but want to do better, those on their way up, ambitious for themselves and their families. These are our people too not to be tolerated for electoral reasons, but embraced out of political conviction. The core vote of this party today is not the heartlands, the inner city, not any sectional interest or lobby. Our core vote is the country.